uh, the, the tracks I don't like is the ones where my car breaks. When's the retirement happening from drag racing? Funny enough, we spoke about it now when we had our little breakfast. Uh, the plans that we have at the moment, uh, no retirement anytime soon. Eh? We still got a lot to give, whether we're racing or assisting. We're actually enjoying the pit crewing now lately. Can you believe it? It's fun to go to the drags, not have a race car, tell everybody a lot of shit, and then pack up and go home. So when we go to drags, I'm always thinking, what could happen differently looking at the different cars? But it's fun not, not doing the work. So the last event, we were racing until an hour before we left. So we just had to load the car and go to the track, and we didn't. Would, have you ever thought of getting to a certain age and saying, that's it? It's difficult to think not having that hobby in your life. That you've had Because it, so takes, it takes you away from whatever stresses you're going through. I mean, that's why we do it. It's another form of our passion. When you can't do that, then what are we going to do? Knit jerseys, paint houses and do gardens. I've got a double garage, uh, six by, by nine metre, whereby three cars are parked in it, two race cars and the Vito. Just enough space for me to get out. The race car is on dollies. So what has to happen is I have to literally push the car on the dollies so I can get a jack under it, jack it up, get the dollies out. Then we haven't even started packing the Vito yet. Then there's back in the Vito, then there's back in the TS onto the trailer, and then of course we can leave. What age did you start racing? About 20, 20, 21. I started racing a 1600 sport. Would you say yes. that was 70s, 60s? When was that? <laughs> <laughs> no, I want the year too, because 80s. this was I think it was about 80, 88, yeah. 87, 88. Look, I was into drag racing to such an extent that um, when, when TJ was born, the eldest one, uh, he was still suckling on Jill and I was racing it and it threw every gear change that did would pop out. <laughs> <laughs> she told that's, that story that, at your she, birthday. Yeah, she told that story at my birthday. Yeah. So that that's how long I've been racing. I mean TJ is now thirty nine years so old. So first second. Yeah. Third. That's it. Okay. We won the race. Yeah, TJ got his tit all the time, but we won the race. Fortunately enough, Ian was my cousin, he worked for, for Ford. And what we used to do is we used to go strip all the other Fords. So we would take the V6, uh, XR6, Cortina XR6 carburetor off and put it on my 1600 Sport. From what car? From a Cortina XR6? Yeah, but what, what cars? What do you, mean? you said you used to strip from what cars? The cars used to come in for services. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, you've got to make a plan. Yeah, we used to drain the petrol out for one first, <laughs> and then we used to strip the carbs. Just put the 38 carb on, 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 onto my 1600 Sport, which was a 36 down drop. And it made a huge difference, eh? Then, and what then, then we the started racing. Did you put it back on the client's car or you just hope they didn't uh, notice it's gone? That wasn't our problem. Eh? Ian, <laughs> Ian had to answer for that. <laughs> All of a sudden, there's something wrong with his car and he had to get a new one. Then we would go change the new one. Once the car comes back in for the replacement, we would then put the new car onto our car and he gets his old car back. Now, those were the days. Was Talton open already when yeah, you guys Yeah, Talton was open already. No, okay, Talton okay. open. We had Talton, we had Rainbow. Listen, I, th I think Talton opened in 1654, am I right? 1976. <laughs> really? Yeah, we that, that's your that birthday. Yeah. yeah, mine also. <laughs> no, Talton has been around for a long time. Yeah. And that's how we actually met up with Satish and Mo and, and, and Dino and, and all those guys and Schaefer's. Yeah. Ravi. Yeah. Ravi, them. they used to actually come to, to Easter Week in Kimberley. And then because I'm living in Joburg, we just finally found out, you know, drag racers or racing guys, it's a small community, we met up with each other locally and when we went down as well. So Before, before Matrick, uh, Shaver's cousin Feroz would take us to Annadale Drags every Sunday religious. And Annadale Drags had Barney with a V8 Rover with nitrous. It had Hannes would come race there, Dion Laram, uh, Adrian. So everyone would come to Annadale Drags. And everyone would come there. So so we, we started watching there. And then Shahid and I, we got a five-meter tape. We found an abandoned road. We measured 400 meters with a five-meter tape. <laughs> <laughs> we sprayed it, and that was our drag strip. And it, maybe where, we where was it? Um, 
we we stayed in Lanesia extension 10 and there was in a, a blocked off road so so yeah we we measured 400 meters or a 5 meter tape took a long and, and time and was, eh? was that every sunday no 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 so that was our personal drag strip this trip but but we would go to to Enadel until we 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 got cars and then when we got cars we started racing in Enadel and then Ravi said uh, Ravi and Mo would race at Rainbow why don't you come to Rainbow I finished school and then I started going to Rainbow. And then in 1996, I won my first championship at Rainbow. Uh, What yeah. championship was that? It, it was the club championship. So, so nine, it ran a, throughout the year? Throughout the year. Yeah. Like, like soccer, points, all that. 1996, <laughs> first one. Um, What car? Uh, Nissan Skyline. Uh, RB30 engine. <laughs> really? Yeah, so, so most people in Enderdale knew me for the... The skyline and uh, what color was it? It was gray. Okay. Gray, and I raced the BMs and yeah, they they used to call me greedy boy and I, and I used to read the uh, fast car magazine and every month they would add the steps. First month we cut the A box, then next month it would be put eight mil HT leads and then cover everything with foil to get the car to run cool. So my car was a uh, uh, um, uh, uh, exemplar of. Uh, fast car magazine and that's uh, because we didn't tune the cars we didn't have money for games and stuff and Mo kept on telling us Opel the 16 valve dead TS this and then we all ended up buying up TS's and then you, that's where you got your TS yeah I bought my TS before Satish okay and then Satish we met each other then Satish bought what, what was year was TS? that I when bought the mine TSs in came out 90, okay. no mine was a 94 model yeah and I bought it in 98 in 2000 he had a black one i had a white one i think as a group we were there were like seven or eight and the, the ones we even went to bloemfontein so we all rode like eight tss down to bloom raced and then drove back how quick were those tss back then 15.2 i think it was Is it? and then yeah and then I was that stripped out gutted no wires? no complete full complete, cost full okay. cost full cost and what mods did you guys do to the TS initially? tnt exhaust yeah Fuel pressure regulator. That was it. That was it. And a KN filter. So, so I had a, a chisel nose Toyota. Three engines. Every combo couldn't beat a Super Boss. If you can't beat them, join them. Uh, so I bought a, a Super Boss. It had a emotion sticker. So it it was nice. Took it to Dion. It ran a a, a 14.7 with pump fuel in your car. Mata is full full car. You guys didn't join the Opel Owners Club. It was during the time, also around about 99, 2000 that we joined. I was lucky enough also, I met Dion Kitchen Brand, how I can't remember exactly. And then, um, I don't know why, but he, he took my car as his pet project and he, he transformed that thing into a little a little monster. I mean, we ran two, 263 on the 1.3 kilometers with that car. Full car, full street car. The Opel VW days were big, huh? Did you guys, was that your number one event to look forward to back when you were part of the club? I think those two clubs were prolific back in the day. And when they did have an event at Tolton, they pulled in the numbers, 250 cars, to oh, race. Easy. And they weren't like heavily modified, but they were okay for what they were back then, because you can't compare now versus then. But no, it was exciting, man. Yeah, we had four, four guys that, that, that was our backstop. That used to be Adrian with the white super boss. You remember that? That was a machine, eh? Agonos. Agonos, yeah. It was something like that. Yeah. I can't remember. So that's the Vaynant car. That's the Vaynant that's car. That's Vaynant's orange car. Oh, is it? Vaynant, yeah. Yeah. And then we had um, Paul Porter. Paul Porter. He used to be our backstop as well. Yeah. And it always used to be between Paul and Yaku. And, yeah. yeah. And then, of course, we used to... Mark them. Jones had the yellow bucky yeah. with the TS set up. With the TS up in as well. Yeah. So I think the Opal Owners Club had a lot to, to do with bringing guys together back then. Because that club was very active. We were always doing something with them. I want to chat about, uh, you've had other experience in drag racing. You had a stint in the tea bucket. Uh, Talton runs a championship for the year. Silly me rocks up, I think, June. And I win every event from June to the end of the year. I raced uh, Marius and Leon in their Opel. I raced the Ubers. I cleaned them all up. All Wait, of them. What were you racing? My super boss. Okay. On the so, handicap system. Okay. Yeah, on the handicap. So pump fuel, no slicks, full car. Were you a sandbagger? No. The, the <laughs> 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 so 
so, for so, you so, to so. constantly win like no, that. I'm just so, gonna put so, that on the table. No, it was just good. I was good. So 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 at that time, um, Control Instruments sold a rev limiter, and I had put it on the car, and I had it on the button which I used as a launch control. So the car was consistent. So I was, and and I I, I still have a fax from Talton, a fax. Uh, I, I ran a, um, a 15.2 in that car, which was a class record at that time. Uh, and these were 12, 13 second cars and they couldn't catch me. I was on the number. And then at the end of the year, Nico and them uh, spoke to Mo and asked him, do you know this guy? Mo, Mo introduced me to the Van Rensburgs and, and we learned a lot there. But the, the, the first was a Saturday. I had to get my full kit, new helmet. Uh, it was my first race suit, boots, everything. Go test the car. D- did you just jump in the car and go down, or did you have a couple of practice runs? Or did they sit in there and explain how it all worked? No. Well, nothing. You, you, so Mo, Mo kind of guided me, okay. because he, he had moved to a new car, so I got his old car. Uh, this is how it works. So you jump in and you go down. Who hit the wall? I, I hit the wall first event. <laughs> So, th- so it's this Capri from Pretoria uh, with nitrous and then Mo's like, yeah, this is a good race. So I warmed the tires up. It didn't warm up. Uh, first, second, third. Um, staged the car. As I walked second sideways into the barrier. So um, I go to Nico. I said, ah, Nico, I'm so sorry. I bumped the car. He says, yeah, just fix it. That was it. Well, did you have to maintain the car? Yeah, so... so uh, my car was next to Michael's car, and that was very exciting. Um, <laughs> and and, <laughs> and um, yeah, so, so you had to look after the car. So after every event, pull the sump off, check the bearings, make sure that the car is in a, in a good condition. Being the T-bucket, very reliable. I mean, I built that engine once in the time I was racing it. Um, yeah, so go to Talton on, on a Saturday, work on the car before race day, and then... Was the car straight? Yeah, that thing made three hundred and fifty horsepower. Ten ten five. How did we? How did we meet Alex Fernandez and Paul? Was that already in your clan? Yeah, that was all top part of Top Sport, and they were they 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 lived at Top Sport, yeah. and you know, so you talk about street drags and illegal drags. Um, Mo had Speedway Auto, and we used to go there every Friday religiously. We used to go have lunch after the mosque. And then after that, Mo used to rile up everyone. Barney, he would phone Barney and say, yes, uh, we've got a guy here that says your car's cock. And Barney would sit no ways. And then off we'd go to go drags. We would drag till 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. Alex Fernandez and all included. We used to use that highway. Um, on yes, on Deckers we used to race. And then also we used to race the top end runs from the East Rand Mall going towards the airport. They had the golf. Um, Alex raced me with the golf. And uh, he was in front when we stood on top of the, 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 the bridge. Yeah. So w- there was an argument that day of what, who won the race. Because he was in front when he went through the start of the bridge. Exit on the other side of the bridge, he was behind because he blew his motor. Oh. <laughs> so, so that was the race. So he was in front. Listen, Alex was a hard racer, <laughs> yeah. hey? That poor yeah. car. No. They had their goals before we even started, I think, because yes. we our, our third edition was the Three Amigos. The industry back then hadn't progressed to the monster that it is now. So when we talk about our cars, we used to not change tyres, race with your street tyre on, never, never changed fuels. I think it was later in 2000 we realized, oh shit, there is ethanol. Ethanol came out then because yeah. I still remember putting yeah. ethanol into schizo um, and that was even like scary. Um, so we were very, no, it was all street. No, I can recall it very nicely. We went to Durban, as I mentioned before, and Durban cleaned us up. And that's where myself and Satish decided <laughs> that's it. We're going to run stripped cars as well. Because you can't compete with the guys with the cars that we had. It was just impossible. And then we, we eventually went the, the, the Mickey Thompson ET route. We stripped our doors. And then all of a sudden, once we started doing that, we started really flying. The but you must remember Yokohama 
were the only tire we had back then. Yes. Yeah. And we were it. also, remember they flew these bunch of um, Japanese guys into West Bank that night. They used all you guys as the guinea pigs to test those tires to see whether it was good for the market, remember? But I, I remember getting a set of Yokohama slicks and maybe they were track slicks. And uh, Fanny always had these Wow ideas and he came with some liquid yes. which you coated the tire with the night to before. make it soft. <laughs> the night before, yeah. We co- and we coated those tires. Yeah. <laughs> and and strangely it worked. Yeah. I, I I I remember the second event I did really well. Yeah. Uh we twelve seven at two fourteen. Mm. Oh wow. I still remember that. Yeah. Yeah, our fastest car in the semis those years was Gavin with the with the Capella, yeah. with the rotary. Yeah, he was the fastest. The front wheel drives we were struggling. So, so I, I think the game changer was the shootout at West Bank. Yes, that you guys hosted. Remember the shootout? That was the first event here went with a cut-up car. Nason appeared from nowhere yes. with his revamped yes. car. Yes. It was, and, and from that day or from that event, the cars just jumped forward. Gone faster. You, yeah. Be- yeah, because before that shootout, Everyone was kind of on semis. We were all mm. competing. And yeah. then there, there was no rules. Okay, speaking about across the country, I think we've gone to every track imaginable. So if I say West Bank, what comes to mind? Jen Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> why, why Jen Johnson? I think she was the first lady to transform the, the sport and, and she took a personal interest in drivers in terms of who you are and going fast. Uh, maybe, maybe for me because I rode the tea bucket and I raced in the same class as her. I know she rolled the rail. Yeah, I know she always had glitter here. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> yeah, that's why he said Jan Johnson. Look, I, I, I can't comment because I, I don't think I've ever raced at West Banker. My car was always broken for West Bank. I went there just for the vibe. For West Bank was a mach- was a was a oh, machine. Oh no, West Bank. I've, I've got three. So we, there was a shootout, and that was in the magazine as well. I remember that specifically quite nicely. Then I remember the Wednesday, the Wednesday nights. Oh, that was awesome. And um, they lined me up against a bike, R1, and I actually gave that bike a good run for this money. Well, I beat the bike. The crowds were insane I remember, back then. Eh? I remember Costa with the Eva. When that Eva came up, the crowd went yeah. absolutely Oh, yeah. yeah. That, that Eva was incredible. There was a pub in West Bank. Raceway, what was it called? With the V8 engine. With the V8 engine in it. Why do you remember that? Uh, we were all sitting outside socializing as speed and so on normally do. And then uh, I ordered my infamous grave tizer. And then a glass came with some ice in it and clear liquid. <laughs> and I thought it was water. <laughs> and I gulped it down in one go. In the meantime, it was someone's double shot of <laughs> vodka. <laughs> vodka. Or vodka. Or I, was, I was glowing the whole night. Well, what, what's your fondest memory of West Bank? My number one was the chicken man. He made incredible chicken on a braai. I remember the first thing I got when I got an event is go up to him and say, hey, remember my order. My next memorable moment was when we started sponsoring Wednesday nights. And then, uh, yeah, North versus South was huge. More importantly, I could take my whole family. Remember they had those foam parties and Kayla was little and she could go play there. So it, I think it was the first track event where it was a family atmosphere. So yeah, it, that, that's uh, West Bank for me. Komati put. I remember Frankie in the Apple Corsa rolled his car coming when we were coming home, yes. Yeah. So he had left way before we did. And we found him on the road. And then when we found him, the car was upside down and we were trying to figure out what the hell had happened because how do you roll at a stop street? And there was another incident at that same time, Satish. I think it was you. So we, we were towing and I, I had just bought this new trailer and they didn't have the, the four-inch straps, they had little ones. And uh, the robot was turning red. Kilian was driving, he braked. And the car jumped over the trailer into the back of my wagon. <laughs> Listen, when you told me that story, I was, I was on the floor. Because yeah, I, no. I was just imagining. <laughs> and, and that was the event I ran 11-9. So from my eye to, to, to the back of the... How did you explain that to your wife? No, no, no. And, and yeah, so we, we got some random people to stand at the back of the trailer 
to kind of pick it up and I, i don't even remember how we got the car back but yeah so the car went landed inside the wagon yeah so over the trailer in the back of the wagon <laughs> she said must have been hectic damage huh? okay uh most memorable moment amsterdam oh what well, plenty plenty what, what we used to look forward to at amsterdam eh was uh, amelo in I think it was the ex holiday in so we took yeah. over that parking lot man we took over the parking lot and there's a certain lady amongst us here she was heavy on fuel eh and the more fuel you gave her man that engine revved eh? <laughs> i tell you there was no stopping there was no rev limiter the clutch was sinking. which which lady was this <sighs> i think that was one of my more favorite events we had there because we had the icons out there with us for the first time ever sabia dropped up Logan had rocked up with his whole family. Um Dupi was there. We were just like a whole a whole clique that hadn't got together like that before. And for those names to come out and uh, to Amsterdam was also unheard of. You didn't just hear of Sabi racing at Amsterdam at any other weekend. Uh Bloemfontein. I, I don't know any accepted the invite for the for the Spitbrei at uh, some other Oh, Pab, yeah. Pab, oh, but the two of you s- What was his name? But Orange they call him Poloni. Poloni Racing. Yeah, Poloni Racing and then you guys never pitched and then it was up to myself and Satish and to hold up the flag there. And then this guy Poloni Racing. He said to us, "Why don't we ever want to race him? It seems to me that we should scare of his cars. The biggest mistake he made in his whole life." So what we done is all the speed and sound cars line up behind each other and we called him out we need to race Satish Satish beats him then he race myself i won the race he race Adrian Fenter he won the race Poloni turned around after and said guys can't we please race somebody else because we've kept then we told him no go fetch your wife's car then he fished his wife's car and <laughs> same thing happened again and afterwards then he said no did did you guys pick on people like that randomly in towns that would irritate you and put them through the team like that yeah if you if you were brave enough to say that uh, we don't like racing you we're scared of you we would make it our point to line you up yeah definitely so you, you used to hunt them down we used to hunt them down and look and who was who was the mediator with all this who would go and uh, approach them and come back to you, to the squad the squad and say right Was it not Jerry Sunny? Yeah, it was. Jerry was he was a big instigator in the whole thing. He was the mouthpiece of 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 the Speed and Sound team in those years. We wouldn't even know sometimes, and we just yeah, you know, you lining up this hook. At that event or one of the other events, I kept telling everyone to pull in. Um, yeah, so we 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 had a room which you organized, and everyone decided to pull in. So Shahid came al- along. Uh, I don't know who all. But we were twenty one of us in one room. But <laughs> <laughs> that, that was all part of the fun, man. Twenty one of us in one because everyone came. To, uh, to bunch you, to, didn't you and Annie have the the the, the honeymoon suite there with the time, mirror with the mirrors on the ceiling? <laughs> we, you told us a story about that the following day, but we will we leave it as is. This we leave it as is. We leave it as is. It was very scary. <laughs> Petersburg. I, I know one story. There was a screamer in a VR6. That was Petersburg as well. <laughs> Someone went for a test drive in a VR6 and screamed like a little girl. What was your most memorable flight? PE. I think it was the PE trip. Um, I'm sitting next to Alex. And uh, Alex Fernandez decides to take a blow-up ball, doll out of his box. <laughs> and he started blowing up this thing and i promise you midday 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 in flight so they can't throw him out we already fly <laughs> so this and it pops because the arms pop first bah, and then the legs pop out bah, and then and there was an old old guy sitting behind us and he was trying to look at the box to see what the name of this box is so maybe he could go buy him the same blow up doll and then alex asked us hey, i was there sorry ma'am do we have to pay for this extra passenger <laughs> did you go down to colony the first one the big one Yeah, so the first one we all towed down. I don't think I was sponsored at that time. No. Uh um, no, none of us were sponsored. We had the stickers on. Yeah, we had the invade in the Cape. And uh, we we all we all stayed in this 
place and I remember Jerry Spoon in Theo. <laughs> Well, I got arrested. Do you remember how big that event was? Yeah, there were there were queues, eh? Queues outside, and I think at one point they they closed the gates, and the spectators wanted to come in. They almost broke the wall down. You went you went illegal hunting. You you dropped me back at the hotel, then you carried on going, and then we didn't hear from you. We only saw you the next morning. Yeah, um, there was a couple of guys that never raced at Kilani for some other reason, some political reason, politics behind it, and they said they would like to meet us at um, the N2 Ultra City, and. We never shied away from a race anyway, but I know we were warned, please don't race because of the sponsorship stickers. But um, and they didn't stop us at all. We pitched up there anyway, and we raced as BM, and we beat the BM on two occasions. And then um, you guys all decided to call it quits because there was no racing happening. And then one of the guys, or the, or the traffic cop, one of the local traffic cops decided, no, he was going to arrest me. And he's arrest. Details were that um, I was driving with an illegal steering wheel. Cause I had that, that squarish type of steering on the car. And then I got a bit, I don't know, harakat. And I said, there's no way you're going to arrest me because he wanted to take my um, license disc off. And then uh, I closed the car and I locked it. And we stood there and then quite a few people left. He came to me again and he says, no, he has to, he has to arrest me. He has to impound the car because of the illegal steering wheel. And then I said, no, no, no ways you're going to do it. And then he was on the radio and then a white van pitched up. And I think it was a, these old police vans. It had, it, it, to me, it looked like it had drop suspension, but we didn't know about drop suspension in those years. But in the meantime, it pitched up and two huge, and I'm talking huge, even it's a bit, men got out with white surgical gloves and R1 rifles. So they got out the back and then the bucky. Yeah, they got, no, they both got at the front, oh. and the back he lifted up. My first words to Jerry was, "Jerry, I'm getting in. <laughs> please, <laughs> please look after my call. Make sure that wherever you go, you go with my call." And that's it. I voluntarily climbed in the back of that back. There was no way I'm going to get those two guys to convince me to get in the back. And then they took me to the police station. Lucky for us, you know, um, you you got to sometimes you do good to others. It, it gets repaid. There was a lady. And she was standing around at Kilani all the time. And then she came and sat on our chairs. And I, none of us chased her away. And she just sat there and she enjoyed the, the, the moment with us, she enjoyed the racing with us. And that same lady, so they took me to the police station. So she was with, and she followed us all the way to the police station. Jerry, of course, driving my car and turned the boost down. Because he says the cop wanted to drive it and he insisted, no, he was going to drive it. That same cop that, that arrested me, he actually looked like he just wanted to drive my car. So then followed us to a uh, police station up there in Somerset West. I can't exactly remember the place so nicely. Come to me when I'm talking about it. And uh, they put me in the holding cells. Shit, this is blood all over the show on the walls in the holding cells. And this lady then said, well, she knew somebody. She was very well connected. And they phoned to the police station. And all I heard, the guy saying, Ja, meneer, nee, meneer, reg, meneer. He came to me and he said to me, Jy is gelukkig, jy ken wie jy ken. Jy is uit. <laughs> and then we going out there, I wanted to throw my weight around. And, and then this, this lady grabbed all of me and said, Shh, just please keep quiet, get in your car and go. <laughs> and then we pitched up to you guys in the morning. Yeah, and, and we, we had breakfast out. and we went to yeah. the track. And so you I, hadn't even slept. No, then I said to you, then you guys didn't even know I was arrested. No, no, no we did because you smelled like cell 442. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we were sleeping. Back, yeah. And Fernando had run up the staircase shouting, Joel, 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 there's in, there's in jail. Memories of First Avenue. First Avenue, uh, besides catching the hiding, many in the parking lot <laughs> with the Cheval. Many the Gouveia. Many the Gouveia, Revin. And it popped into reverse <laughs> into some oaks golf. Beautiful, beautiful golf. <laughs> and and he wrote Aina at the back <laughs> and still raced the car. No, and that was First Avenue, uh, but also a bumpy ride. So um, you go down there and there's a bump. And when the car goes airborne, the brakes lock, pulls to the side and you go around. And then I stopped there and said, shit, this is, this is not racing. And I jump out and say, "Yeah, let's do it again." If if I think about Durban, Julian stands out. 
what is what is blue oh, yes. golf and then Gert always uh, I'll run a 10 second I remember he had brought the, the AMS setup from overseas crate engine carbon fiber doors um and he was convinced yeah the the car was together Listen, there was wasn't a car quite like that there that day though hey no. he went no. like balls to the wall that day with yeah. that car yeah so did, did you think that that little dip had something to play with it racing is dangerous racing in the street is worse the stopping distance in in first avenue was yeah. was the worst ever worse than kilani worse than pe but we still raced there, and we were doing 200 plus down there, so I think, yeah. So we used to go Friday night, we used to go practice. Yeah. All the golfs used to break. Yeah. The top sport golfs used to break. Yeah. For yeah. them to change the yeah. gearboxes at no, night the at the City Lodge. Yes, they, they overnighted the cranking. They stayed up the whole day. The Saturday morning they were there Happy. lining up to race. Yeah. Mm. yeah. But that parking lot at the City Lodge was left full of oil. Oil, yeah. Remember that? Yeah. Uh, Namibia. Namibia. Oh, okay. I got, oh. A, I, got, I got a Namibia story. So the Saturday we were leaving, and the Friday I can't find my. The Thursday I can't find my passport, and I remember saying, "Guys, I, I lost my passport, and the only way I'm gonna get there is if someone dies." <laughs> <laughs> and and Otto had organized the death certificate with a letter for, from my cousin saying that she wanted me at a funeral and that's how I got a temporary passport. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why when Satish arrived in, in Namibia, we all had a moment of silence for the, his family member that passed away. Before we raced, we had a moment of silence for his family. Even in the prize, not the, the driver's briefing, they had a, a minute silence. For, so that was, uh, that was one of the, mo <laughs> the memorable moments that I can remember. <laughs> two, two other memories. Um, the one is racing the cop car. Yep. I gave him my head start, two car head start, and I beat the cop car. And then the, the other one was I shared a room with Kevin Rowe and Theo, and we had a parade through the, the city, and they oh. broke their cars. And I had to hear, hear them lament the whole evening. <laughs> <laughs> that was sad, man. We couldn't race. <laughs> In yeah. uh, It was the main street, and it had a slight curve in. There was a traffic cop there taking speed readings. Um, yeah, and I ran 11.0. And I, I think I was the fastest. No, maybe we land at the airport. So apparently we're racing in Volvos. So we don't fly direct to Volvos, we fly to Vintuk. <sighs> and then this clever little... The new guy. The new guy. The new guy. The new guy that any of them employed. He somehow we were supposed to fly? Yeah. To Volvos. Yeah. Then we ended up flying to Vintuk because Wayne said... No, it's about a half an hour's drive. And we crammed into the, this little high-ace taxi. And then Fernando bought a map. And at the back, he was sitting right at the back. Fernando pitched and said, Oh, it's only four hours drive. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think what made this whole team was the, the memories that we made with the events. We, we raced so many cars. We, we met so many people. But the memories stands out more than... Than all the shit that Listen, I think we out. have a hell of a lot more stories. Mm. No, we do. We do. And, but we can't go to those ones. Yeah. You know, we, we, <laughs> we, got, thrown, we got thrown out of yeah. strip bars. We got, you know, we got stopped by the cops. You were hotboxed in a taxi with... An, a, no, in a, in in a, a, in a, a hotbox in a hotel room. I think we were lucky to have experienced racing in the decade we did. Yeah. There wasn't a lot of red tape. No, there wasn't. And even though we were street racing and having fun back then, the thought of people dying or the thought of dying wasn't really in the back of your mind so or what the, you know, the significance of what it could do to companies associated to drags and how you could get sued. You know what? I think that all became very real when the cars became too quick to take around the country. And that's where we stopped North versus South and went to Sport Compact. Mm -hmm. And then the guys are like, why did you stop touring? Because cause the transition, like the tracks aren't changing, but the cars are getting quicker. Thank you for creating memories with us. Sir. Yeah. Thank you for, for generating them with us. Because I mean, without you guys, it's... And remember, you guys also gave up time with your families. We gave up lots of time with everyone just to go race. We were definitely a lucky bunch of, or a lucky group to have had the sponsors we had to allow us to experience what we had experienced, you know. But 
I, I don't think we're done yet, eh? I think the, as the economy turns, we're going to see people being able to afford those three grand entry fees. Yes. And and uh, I know for myself in Tio, if we get some help, someone to put crew for us, you'll see our cars racing. I've got my check. I can help you. I've got, I got my check. Show for me, please. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
How's I'm the clutch feel? <laughs> How's the clutch? I don't know yet. Feels alright. So you hope it's gonna hold up, huh? Yeah. What's up with your car? Uh, there was a fuel leak on the fuel pump, but we sorted it out. And. Uh, <laughs> That's the niece with Rion Kreiwagen. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, what you doing, man? Hey, man, I'm looking at the clouds. Yeah? Hey, hey I'm what's the happening? Hey, yeah. <laughs> the and these goals have cut up stuck in, but the fact that they got windows in is a miracle. Uh, thank you, Drew. So this is part of the circuit, eh? Yeah. yeah. This is straight. I think the circuit is awesome.